How are you? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> Very good. So, uh, what's your name? Uh, my name is Tiffany. Tiffany. Okay. My name is Ruben. Nice to meet you, Tiffany. Yeah. So, could you tell me a little bit about yourself? Um. Yeah. I'm now 19 years old, and I'm from Vietnam. I'm from Vietnam, and now I'm studying English in a residential school in mm -hmm. Vietnam. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Uh, what is a residential yeah. school? Uh, you mean what? Or what? Well, what does it mean? <laughs> I've never heard of a residential school. Um, actually, it's um, I don't. Uh, it's a place that we um, uh, we students we live together and like cook and like do all activities together. And in here, they teach us English. We're okay, very good. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so. Uh, what I usually do on Cambly is I ask you a couple of questions so I can get an estimate of your English level. Um, and then I use a couple of texts um, that we can uh, read together and analyze the, the content. Uh, does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, could you tell me about your, your travel experience? Have you traveled to any countries outside of Vietnam? Yeah. Um... I have never been to another country, and actually in Vietnam, I just go to some like provinces here. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but I like traveling, and I hope that I can like travel more in the future. Okay, if I gave you a blank travel check, where would you go? Um, the first place must be Spain. Spain. <laughs> okay, why? Um, because I'm a fan of Barcelona Football Club. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I want to go to um, Barcelona City and go to Camp Nou Stadium to watch them okay. playing. Very good. I spent I spent four months in uh, Spain this year. Um, and I was also in Barcelona for, I think, a month and a half. Um, but I didn't go to the football. It's very expensive, <laughs> but uh, it's a very nice city. You'll like it very much. Yeah. So what do, you, what do you know about Spain? Um, I am just know a little bit, like, <laughs> let's see. Um, I just know that it is the neighbor of France and uh, they speak Spanish. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, they have their, um, like, the festival with the like, how can we say? It is a festival with the the not the, yeah. I don't know how to express the the cow or yeah. like uh, the uh, they have the uh, yeah. a, yeah. a rat or yeah. like. Yeah. How can I say? <laughs> are you are you talking about the bullfighting? Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, I think so. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, a bullfighter is called a toreador. Oh, it's uh, a Spanish word. Yes. Oh. So, uh, the they fight bulls. They do bullfighting, uh, and they've been doing this for a very long time. Um, so there is what there is stadiums filled with people, and then there is one fighter who has a, a sort of sword, um, and he fights the bull. So the trick is to go to the side very fast when the bull tries to uh, attack you. Uh, so have yeah. you ever so, been to uh, a festival like this before? I think it's kind of kind of uh, over the top. Uh, it's very animal unfriendly. Uh, as in, uh, they kill the animal every time. Um, so the animal dies. Huh? That's kind of the whole point <laughs> and then they eat it um so it's kind of cruel uh, yeah. when it comes to um animal cruelty it's <laughs> not really ethically it's not really okay uh but it's it's a very um heroic uh kind of thing uh, to fight a bull uh. so historically i understand uh but it I don't think it really has a place in 2000, uh, 
or 19 or 2019. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I was in Sevilla um, and there uh, they have the biggest uh, bullfighting ring in the world. Uh, but I never, I never went. Also because it's it's very expensive. It's like seventy euros for a, a ticket. Um, yeah. Sorry. So have you heard of a siesta? No. You know what a siesta is? It is also <laughs> a Spanish word. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. yeah. So all the people in um, Sp in Spain, all Spanish people, they do a siesta. Uh, what this means is they go to work from nine or 10 in the morning till one, then they eat and then they go to sleep. Uh, so because it's so warm in Spain, uh, they go to sleep during the warm hours of the day. Uh, so from one till four, everybody has a nap <laughs> and they call this a siesta. <laughs> so I like this very much. I think this is a very good concept. Um, so, you know, I think this is why the, uh, you know Sorry, Spanish. I interrupted you. A little bit. Yes, I'm learning Spanish. Yeah, yeah. just a little bit. <laughs> no, not very much, but I know a little bit of Spanish. Um, so yes, this is this is some things about Spain that are very interesting. Um, so tell me a bit about your your hobbies. What do you do uh, in your free time? Um, in my free time, I like to uh, read books and immerse myself in nature. Mm -hmm. I love nature. Very good. So what are you reading right now? Um, a book um, of a Japanese author. I don't know how to like um, read, uh, pronounce his name like in English, but that's a book okay. named um, <laughs> um the the west the east of the of border and the west of the sun maybe yeah because i'm that's the title it, of the book yeah that's uh because i'm reading it in um vietnamese so uh i don't okay, really okay, remember okay. the the title in english uh -huh. so what is the book about could you tell me what it's about um, I think that's about love and, uh, actually I just started in, <laughs> okay. yeah, pages. All right. So every book uh, has a team. Um, do you know what I mean with a team? Okay. Uh, all right. So, um, could you, could you name me some teams? Like. Team in a book or? Yes. So wh when I talk about teams, I mean um, the the general, what, what, we, what, what we would call uh, the general idea of the book, uh, the, the spirit of the book. Uh, there's always a certain team that comes to the foreground. Um, for example, I'll give you uh, one example. Uh, crime doesn't pay. Uh, this is a certain theme that in a lot of literature um, always comes back. Um, another one is your own worst, oh, sorry, own worst enemy. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these are two examples of um, themes. So do you think in, in these kind of wording, um, do you think you could describe the theme of your book? It's not an easy question. <laughs> I know. Family is um, everything. <laughs> is Very that good. Team? Yes. <laughs> Sure, why not? <laughs> Family is one of the most important teams in the in the world. Um, so uh, I'll give you another couple of teams. Huh? Um, so age story. You probably heard of this. Uh, so coming of age. Uh, this means this is your typical um, 
let's 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 take Catcher in the Rye. Have you heard of Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger? No. This this is your typical Western coming of age story. Huh? Uh, someone is in their puberty, is 15, 16, 17, on the brink of adulthood, um, and he um, there's something happens in which he matures, in which he reaches adulthood. And they call this a coming of age story. Um, so when you become of age, you become an adult. This is a very common theme in, uh, in literature. Um, there's a lot of books about growing up. And this is one of the themes. Yeah. Um, another one, overcoming the odds. Huh? Mm -hmm. So doing something that is improbable, that is very difficult and uh, overcoming the odds. Eh? The odds are against you, but you still rise above it and you do it anyway. Yeah. That's another common theme. Mm -hmm. um, give you one more that may be interesting. Um, of course. Yeah. Good versus evil. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very typical one. <laughs> so um, I told you I use a couple of texts. Uh, so are you, are you on your smartphone or on your computer? Um, I'm on my smartphone. Okay. Let's try if we can figure this out. So um, I use a couple of different texts um, that may be interesting. So I have here one um, poem by someone named Maya Angelou. Uh, have you heard of Maya Angelou? No, I haven't yeah, yeah. heard about it before. So she she's uh, a, a poet from the 60s in the United States. Um, and she uh, wrote about um, the feeling of being uh, discriminated. So in this time, there was still uh, what we call segregation. So different uh, treatment of black and white people. Um, and she was black and she uh, felt um, hard done by. So she felt uh, there should be equality. Mm -hmm. uh, so she wrote a poem called, uh, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. Yeah. So let's see if you can open this poem on your smartphone. Yeah. <laughs> Does it work? It is look like a, a poem or? It's a poem, yes. So what I'd like you to do is read the poem out loud so I can listen to your pronunciation. And afterwards, we'll talk about the poem. Okay? Okay. Um, okay. A free, a free bird leaps on the back of the wind and floats downstream till the current ends and dips his wing in the orange sun rays and dares to climb the sky. But a bird that stalks down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of bridge. His wings are clipped and so he opens his throat to sing. The caged bird sings with a fearful Trill of things unknown, but longed for still, and his tune is heard on the distant hill. For the caged bird sings for freedom. The free bird thinks of another breeze, and the trade winds soft through the sighing trees, and the fat worms waiting on a down bright lawn, and he needs. Dog. Lawn? A dawn bright lawn. Oh, a dawn bright lawn. And he names the sky his own. But a caged bird stands on the grave of dreams. He sat down, shouts on, shouts on a nightmare scream. And his wings are clipped and his feet are tied. So he opens his throat to sing. The caged bird sings with a fearful chill of things unknown, but longed for still. Is that the end? I can... Is that the end? There's <laughs> only four more lines. 
because I cannot like. <laughs> you can't go down anymore. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and his tune is heard on the distant hill, for the caged bird sings of freedom. Okay. okay. So this was a poem. What did you think about this poem? What poem? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you un did you understand the poem? Just a little bit, like oh, a bird want to be free, and want to yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> have new breeze. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, the what the poem is about huh, is uh, about the the feeling of freedom. It's about how there is a difference between how you perceive uh, freedom uh, when you either have it or you don't have it. Yeah. Huh? So, I like to think all people are free, but this is not the case. Eh? Some people have obligations towards um, things that could be family, that could be work, that could be other things. Um, the, the caged bird is uh, a metaphor for, um, you, you know what a metaphor is, right? Yeah. So, it's a, the caged bird is a metaphor uh, for someone who feels... Uh, we call shackles, huh? um, contained in a certain way. Um, so the song of a caged bird um, can be very beautiful. As in, um, if you feel um, in some way trapped or caged, huh? it's out of these situations Sometimes that the the beautiful songs, eh, the the whether it's literature, music, poetry, anything creative, uh, often comes out of a lack of uh, freedom by being uh, limited in your possibilities. You dream of what is possible, um, and that is that's what the poem is about. Uh, out of frustration out of being uh, limited in your possibilities, um, often there, there's something good that can come out of it. Um, because it, let's say uh, you are born with um, endless possibilities. Let's say your father is filthy rich. Uh, you don't ever have to work a day in your life. Um, you don't have any worries whatsoever. You're born in a very nice part of the world. Your song as that person um, will never be a song of freedom. Huh? It will never be a very beautiful song. If you don't have, if you, if you've never encountered anything um, that tried to contain you, that tried to cage you, uh, how do you really know what freedom is? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But you're asking me okay. or. No, I'm telling you. <laughs> so, um, I see we only have 40 seconds left, um, so we're going to have to say goodbye. Um, okay. It was very nice to talk to you. Yeah. I hope you found it a, a useful lesson, um, and I wish you a very, very nice Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for spending time talking. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye-bye. Okay. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Yeah.